Hey everybody and welcome to Cut Transform Glue. So this is where we left in the first episode of this weird hacking crab robot. Some have been saying that it looks like a virus or a bacteria, which I do appreciate. Could actually be an inspiration for a name, but it is too soon to settle on a name. And I made some additions to this project that might change that idea completely. Stick around to find exactly how. It was clear to me at that point that the legs were too simple compared to the body. So the first thing I did was a set of detailing on all four legs. Now the challenge when detailing as that copies is to have multiples of the parts you choose, which is not always the case. Luckily I have a ton of keycaps and some very cool resin printed parts. I'm a big fan of precise things, so when I have to glue multiple pieces on the same spot, I don't like to just eyeball it. So I always throw a couple of lines on the surface of the model in order to keep things aligned. This is especially helpful in projects with eco parts like this one, and it might seem like an overkill, but I think the result really pays off. Here in my shop I have a relatively new drawer for the smallest detail parts in my collection. Right here I'm reaching for these amazingly precise acrylic shapes. I cut this on a laser CNC on a public maker space right here in my city using reclaimed acrylic that I removed from broken laptop screens. This thin acrylic is amazing, works perfectly with the CNC and also retains all details, especially if the machine is well tuned. It also works great with the super glue, so right now this is my favorite way to add some nice bumps on the surface of the model. But I'm also going for some styrene discs that I make myself right here on this shop. A couple of resin printed parts that were sent to me by an amazing person, high quality stuff. Oh, and always remember when adding things on top of moving parts, make sure they will not interfere with each other. The legs had four segments each, which means a lot of work, so I kept going. On the second last segment, I added some big air vents. A couple of styrene discs on the outside of them. And I was finally done with it. Now here's something that I decided to try in this project. So you probably already saw me using some M4 bolts and nuts to connect the leg segments. It's a reliable way that I've been using all these years in my projects. This time I decided to actually print some pieces with the nuts embedded on them. And to make that I just have to pause the print midway, as you just saw, and then insert the nuts. Now of course that only works because I'm very familiar with the tolerances I'm able to get with my printer, and in my case it is 0.3 millimeters. After the nuts are positioned I can just resume the print and it will enclose them in there. An amazing technique that is actually very easy to reproduce and one that I'm definitely using again in the future. And this right here is the result. With a great level of detail on the legs, I felt that this crab needed at least one arm, of course, and I knew exactly where to look for the perfect pieces. If you're an old subscriber, you know that I love these Wi-Fi antenna axles, and to be honest, I'm kinda anxious of running out of them eventually. But anyways, with them I chose a bunch of other interesting bits and pieces and began building this arm. The first challenge, to connect the Wi-Fi antenna axles without any glue to be able to later change the poles. Yes, I did hurt my finger as you can see by the bandage right there. 
missing a small chunk of my index finger, I kept going only a bit slower, always testing the arm against the robot to check size and position. I want this arm to be like the energy weapon that the crab points at the enemies to interfere with them. So on the tip I want something that looks like a retro ray gun or something like that. And this is what is going to be on the very tip of the weapon, precisely the look I was going for. And it connects to the arm using a single stud of a fake Lego brick. I then added a few extra detail pieces on the black structure on the side of the arm. And then I installed a very interesting resin piece on the side of the arm. Some of you might remember this one. It is the same shape I've added to the side of the science operator SAP. You should check the full build video of it if you haven't already. And then I needed, of course, a reliable way to attach the arm to the body of the crab. And if you guess yet another 3D printed piece, a filament one this time, you guessed it right. The best way to attach things together and still be able to keep them apart for the painting process. I really loved the look of the arm on the robot, I think it perfectly matched the aesthetic I was going for, but there were a couple of extra things that I wanted to add to it before calling it done. And here's yet another Gribbly that was used on a different project first, but I want you to guess this one. Let me know in the comments where you think this one belongs to. The installation was pretty simple, I just had to mark and open a gap on the side of the air vent and glue the shape in place, pretty easy and I loved the result. But there's one extra feature that this thing needs to be a crab. Of course, some weird crabby eyes. This is what he was missing all along. And this is it for this video. A special thanks to all my patrons and YouTube members. Please consider joining them and supporting me. I could really use your help. And as always, thanks for watching.